Man, oh, man, if the game is anywhere close to as good as Harry Salem's son did on the national anthem, we're going to have ourselves an outstanding basketball game here this evening. Or Roberts University in Arkansas getting set to do battle on January 27th of 1996. ORU loses 66-65 in Fayetteville as we talked about Kareem Reed with 1.8 seconds left for the win for Arkansas after Clifford Crenshaw had given the Golden Eagles the one-point lead with nine seconds left. And so obviously both teams remember that, George Frazier. And for Arkansas, it's going to be interesting to see how the players react. The coaches have made their statements concerning the NCAA inquiry. The announcement yesterday that an investigation has begun and some allegations of wrongdoing have been made against the program. Those will not be addressed until after the program. The coaches say it has really no effect on the players. But what do the players think about it? Because obviously their future is somewhat in question, too, in terms of what could hit the program on down the line. Well, particularly your younger players, whenever you start thinking about that ball club and you say, okay, postseason, are we going to be on television? What are they going to do? How many scholarships are they going to take away? I think Nolan will rise above all that. I think he'll get his ball club prepared to play. They realize they're on a mission to go back after an off year, even though they got to the Sweet 16. They weren't happy. And I think that's something that Nolan's instilled in this ball club and reflected in their first ball game. For Arkansas in the first ball game, as you mentioned, what a performance it was. 127-74 for Jackson State. Nolan called it the finest opening game performance by a team he's the coach of in his 34 years. And certainly Bill South teams coming off one of their better performances in their second game against Northeast Louisiana. So these teams seemingly on peak form as they collide tonight. Well, I think they are. I think if you look at Roberts University, they're, they're very excited about what they've been able to accomplish, particularly against Northeast Louisiana, a ball club that pressures you all the way up and down the floor. And if you ask Bill Self, would he handpick this schedule to start the year? I don't think so. He'd like to meet Arkansas in the middle of January right. in this stadium instead of right now. But what it does, it really tests a veteran ball club, a ball club that is probably prepared to play Arkansas at this point. And as you stated, the longest winning streak in Division I basketball at 12 right now. So we'll see what happens tonight. They've got their, got a, got their work cut out for them tonight. It should be a great ball game. Bill Self in his fourth season as the head coach as all the players are introduced for both sides in Arkansas and Nolan Richardson have been together for 12 seasons after his tremendous tenure as head coach at the University of Tulsa when he used to fill this place up with lots and lots and lots of TU fans whenever Tulsa played here either against ORU and or in a couple of appearances in the NCAA tournament losing to Houston and Hakeem Olajuwon when they made one of their great runs. Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler against Nolan Richardson during his first appearance as a head coach in the NCAA tournament back in 1982. Just a few minutes away from the opening tip-off, our officials this evening, Mike Wood from the ACC, Bill Robinson, and Antonio Petty from the SEC. And it was interesting, George, we were talking to Antonio the first time, so much athleticism on the floor. Some of the younger guys you made reference to for Arkansas dunking in warm-ups, and uh, Antonio said, that's a T, kid, stop it. Gave him the warning. We could have some ugliness before we got underway. Boy, you think we would have brought Nolan off the bench if we'd have started <laughs> this with a technical two shots and ORU's ball out of bounds. No advantage is needed here for Oral Roberts. They're in their home ballpark. They've got a home crowd here, although a lot of people have driven over from Arkansas to watch the Razorbacks play. This should be one whale of a ball game. All right, it's nearly a capacity crowd at the Navy Center, which holds just under 11,000 folks. Garrett Hood, number 55 for Arkansas, set to jump center against Rocky Walls, number 14 for ORU. We are set to go as Mike Wood will toss it up and Blake Moses controls for the Golden Eagles and we are underway. Arkansas comes out on the man-to-man. -man. They'll use lots and lots of defenses and all will have a trap to them. Earl McClellan has the ball with Kareem Reed on him and he looks for some help and gets it from Clifford Crenshaw guarded by Landis Williams. Now Walls penetrates against Hood, loses the ball and Pat Bradley comes up with it for the Razorbacks. He had 25 points in the opener, shooting lights out. Derek Hood coming off an 18.11 rebound performance goes down low to Lee Wilson. Lee Wilson, who played in the NCAA championship game, shoots an air ball in the NCAA championship game four years ago, and Earl McClellan will control for the Golden Eagles. Lake Moses comes out high post. We'll go to Tim Gill on the wing. Down low, Walls, nice pass, but Walls shoots an air ball. Already, George, the adrenaline is pumping. 
Well, you see the shots going over the rim, a little bit short. You've got a lot of adrenaline. This ball club is ready to play some basketball. And the first basket goes to Derek Hood. Credit Derek with the bucket. 6'8", 210-pound sophomore from Kansas City who uh, led the club in rebounding last year as a freshman, and now pressure in the backcourt, as we talked about. Earl McClellan having some difficulty, still trying to break it. They're getting close to the 10 count, and they just beat it. Clifford Crenshaw will drive the lane, puts up the running one. And so when you break the press, there's some opportunities on the offensive end, but you got to break that press. Easier said than done. And now Kareem Reed puts it up. Can't get it to drop, but he'll earn a trip to the line. More noted for assist, but that time he took it to the hole himself. Well, one thing that he has is extreme quickness, and he can take the ball to the hole, and he saw a crease in the lane, and they spread it out for him. And as soon as the big men see that, and they see that he has a break to the basket, they'll take him over. It's a great shot right there by a camera crew. You get an open lane, he's going to take it and use his quickness, go to the line, and try to get two. Earl McClellan charged with the personal foul, and the first free throw spins out for Kareem Reed, the incredibly gifted sophomore from the Bronx, 5'10", 165 pounds, set the single game Arkansas assist record in their opening night last Friday with 15 assists against Jackson State coming off a freshman season in which he dealt out 219 assists second free throw is good for Kareem and we are at 3-2 Arkansas with a one-point advantage pressure not quite as difficult now for the Razorbacks as they kind of go back and play defense but Pellin left alone for the wing he'll take the shot and air ball two air balls by Arkansas and air ball also by ORU Williams in the middle jam and that's an assist from Kareem Reed as they run the floor beautifully. Landis Williams, the really gifted 6'7", 210-pound junior from Booker T. Washington here in Tulsa. Gill will pick up the ball, and now Reed gets the steal, sets up Bradley. Bradley, one on two, is going to try to do it himself, gets the layup and count. And just like that, it is 7-2, and Bill Self says we need to talk about this as the pressure is really affecting the RU Golden Eagles. 22nd timeout, I believe, as uh, the university, yep, 22nd timeout, so George and I will keep the broadcast here. And we, one of the points George made reference to in the pregame was absolutely on target. Earl McClellan and company have to handle the press, and right now the press just too difficult for you. Well, one thing that's happening, too, they're taking Wilson from Arkansas, putting him up on the lead spot. You're talking about 6'11", an arm span of 7'2", occupies a lot. As soon as they get the ball in bounds, it's a two-man trap. Now, all of a sudden, as the ball starts to move up the floor they float with the ball and that time Kareem Reed just laid back like a safety in football as soon as he saw the pass he took off with it Bradley does a nice job up front everybody talks about a pure shooter but he's got a lot of quickness to go with it really a nice kid too just smiling just glad to be playing college basketball this time they break the press and Blake Moses can't get it to drop because Derek Hood gets all of that block and Arkansas going back the other way Reed thought about it and decides to wait for some help. Tries to throw it to Derek Hood, and Arkansas will still control underneath the RU hoop. Boy, Derek Hood, what a block that was on the other end, as you see the big guy from KC. Lee Wilson, man in the middle, goes to Hood, and Hood has this one blocked the other way. Rocky Wall's playing good defense. A great job that time by Blake Moses being able to front, uh, get on the backside of Wilson, make him feel the pressure. He dished it off. Walls made a great defensive play. Pat Bradley has it on the wing with Tim Gill on him. Pat Bradley coming off a 10 of 12 night, and he throws it away. Earl McClellan gets the steal. Can't hit the layup, but Pat Bradley knocks it out, and apparently it goes off the fingertips of Tim Gill, and so Arkansas has it getting a break on the call. It's a shame that ORU could not convert that because it was great defense by McClellan, but the layup will not go. Reed penetrates, looks for some help, and gets it. Now out front to Bradley. Three seconds in the lane, I believe, on the big guy. Lee Wilson hanging around in the lane, and man, he's a big guy, isn't he, George? <laughs> a huge body in the lane, so you're going to get caught for the three seconds if you don't move. They switched it around. Now they've moved Wilson to the back of the press. Earl and company breaking that press, trailing 7-2. Arkansas. The early advantage. Clifford Crenshaw making just another great 71st start. Another quality start for him as he tries to set up some offense. Pat Bradley putting some pressure on him. Shot clock underneath 15. Tim Gill, first shot count. It's a free ball, 7-5. The lead cut to two. Arkansas with possession in the lead. And quickly the other way, it is Lee Wilson with the deuce. Well, this is a big ball game, too, for Timmy Gill. He wants to prove he can play against the Arkansas. He does it hitting the three. 
Tim into the lane, dumps off nicely to Earl McLeod. Man, that's a good feed from Tim Gill. 9-7, and man, we are going back and forth. Definitely the Arkansas tempo. But right now, are you hanging around, which is exactly what Coach Self wanted. Just hang around close until the end. Bradley getting some pressure. Bounce pass to Lee Wilson. In the corner on the penetration, but Pat Bradley takes the pass. This is his first shot. Ball goes out of bounds. Or you will control, and that's a good job of defense. And right away, Bill Self goes to his bench and brings in Kevin Scruggs, easily the most athletic individual in ORU's roster because, I mean, the athleticism displayed by Arkansas is so tough, you got to put another guy out there to meet that. Well, he's got to meet the athleticism, but he can still get up above the rim and rebound and use his quickness. Blake Moses will take a seat next to Coach Self. Nolan Richardson standing and watching things as his team played some good defense. Scruggs has it knocked out of his hands by Derek Hood, who will draw the personal foul. And that's the type of foul that Bill Self likes to see. Now, all of a sudden, you apply a little bit of pressure, and he's able to go out and draw the foul. That's what's outstanding about it. We'll bring you back here to the babysitter as Arkansas is on top of the Golden Eagles, 9-7. MJ, we got ourselves a good one, folks. Arkansas 9, ORU 7. And early going, Arkansas getting a lot of point blank shots, and that's why they've hit four of their first six. ORU 3 of 7, but rebounds also a key, and the Razorbacks have four of those, including two by Derek Hood. Arkansas, though, with, uh, I checked that ORU with possession and a chance to tie the Arkansas Razorbacks. And they come out of the timeout in a 1-3-1 trap to the Razorbacks. Scruggs, Freel on the baseline, goes out front to McClellan, who tries to penetrate. Nice bounce pass, but Walls gets it stuffed back in his face, gets it stuffed out of bounds again by Derek Hood. Well, the nice part about that is Walls doesn't stop going to the hole. He gets it blocked once, he goes right back up again, and that's going to be a confidence because he'll get people in foul trouble. Derek Hood, the highest freshman rebounding total since a guy named Sidney Moncrief played for Arkansas way back when. McClellan will try to penetrate and find his man, Timmy Gill, who does. Timmy Gill goes the other side. There's Clifford Crenshaw for three. Can't convert, but Scruggs pulls down the rebound as he gets a friendly carol. Timmy Gill trying to get some help and delivers to Scruggs, who delivers an air ball. Man, 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 that's the third air ball for ORU, and Reed goes back the other way. Dishes off to Lee Wilson, who can't convert on the jam. And then the ball is knocked out of bounds. That's some pretty good defense after ORU had been beaten to the punch. Well, when they get the shot off, all of a sudden it comes back to the other end of the floor, and what happens is ORU hustles back. Derek Taylor's coming into the ball game to add a little bit of muscle for Oral Roberts right now. But they got back on defense, and that creates that brick on the slam. Wilson on the baseline looking for some help. Arkansas at 9-7, and Reed will put up a three ball. Will not go. Battle for the loose ball. Reed comes down with it, and he sets the attack. The little guy from the Bronx wheels and deals and tries to set up an assistive opportunity. Landis Williams has it knocked out of his hands. Timmy Gill going for the steal, but Pat Bradley winds up with it. Bradley with a man advantage for Arkansas goes to Reed. Dipsy do no good, but the tip in is by Landis Williams. 11-7, Landis showing some athleticism. Boy, we're going to use that word a lot tonight with these Arkansas Razorbacks. Crenshaw left alone. He'll fire the jump shot. Four, four points for Clifford. 11-9, an Arkansas lead of two. Wilson now has it knocked out of his hands, and Crenshaw knocks it off of Wilson. Great play by Cliff. A great job by Crenshaw, and that's what you're going to see a lot of. You're going to see that ball come on the backside. They're going to double down and get some help. Blake Moses comes back into the ball game to bang a little bit. Wilson steps out of the ball game. Will Roberts will go to a little bit, or excuse me, Arkansas will go to a little bit smaller lineup and a little bit faster and try to turn up the tempo at this point. I like the way, George, right now that ORU is kind of controlling the emotions. They've shot a few air balls, but, you know, they're not getting out of their game. It's a credit to Coach Self. Earl against the zone, tries to get it to Moses, but the loose ball goes to Derek Taylor. And I think Derek has earned himself a trip to the free throw line as the personal foul is going to be whistled on Arkansas. One thing that Derek Taylor does extremely well when he gets the basketball, he's only six foot four, 220 pounds, but he is so powerful. And you look at his arms, it tells you about his leg strength and upper body strength. And what you receive is he'll use that body an awful lot to draw fouls inside against the bigger players. Great observation because that is exactly what happened in that occurrence as Taylor drains the first one. He'll have a second. 
Their first exhibition game, he shot 13 free throws. The next, he shot 14. He's going to go to the line when he gets the ball. Former McLean Scott misses the second one as Taylor sees Landis Williams, his former high school rival from Booker T. Washington, pull up the rebound, and Arkansas goes back the other way, leading 11 to 10. Oh, are you now going back to a zone? Bradley will penetrate. Bill Self and Nolan Richardson just giving each other different looks. Hood has it, thinks about the shot, and goes back door and counted for Ollie Thompson just into the lineup for Arkansas, the 6'5", 200-pound sophomore from Jonesboro. He'll go to the line with an opportunity to complete an old-fashioned three-point play, and goodness, did Arkansas look good in operating against that zone as you see the replay right here. Not much that Taylor could do about it after Thompson took the delivery inside. Also into the lineup now for the Razorbacks comes Glendon Alexander, the 6'5", 205-pound freshman from Carrollton, Texas. And all Glenda did was set the Texas State High School scoring record. All-time leading scorer in Texas as Thompson completes the three-point play. 14-10 Razorbacks, 13-20 and counting in the first half. Gill at the half line, beats the press, goes to Moses. Moses, one dribble, can't hit the layup. Misses the tip, still trying to keep it alive, still trying to keep it alive. Derek Taylor says, I'll play garbage man and give the garbage man the deuce. Three points for Derek, 14-12, a two-point advantage for the Hogs. Reed out front with it. As ORU goes back to man-to-man. -to -man. Reed penetrates, dumps it off to Thompson, who puts up the shot in and out. Hood with the follow can't go. Still trying to put it back, and Moses thought he had a block. Instead, he gets a personal foul. That's his second foul here in the contest. I think you might have seen an over the back that time when Hood went up over the back of Blake Moses to get the rebound to be able to put it back in. Take a look at it right here. The ball comes off. Blake gets it. It's swiped. They got to go back the other way. But whenever they get up on top of him, he's not powerful enough to jump with these guys. But he's got a great body for blocking out. And that's one thing the referees are going to have to help us in that area if you're looking at Oral Roberts. Exactly. They're going to have to call the over the back because these guys can out jump us. But in that situation, as the first free throw is good for Derek Hood, who has now three points, unless you get definitely all ball, when you see an arm scraping, there's not much the official can do but call a foul when you're that close underneath. But goodness, the bodies were clinging that time, and Hood hits them both. Hood, not only is a high school All-American, George, he says as Arkansas employs the press and Moses has some trouble, he says signing with Arkansas was the greatest day in his life, and he's also a pretty nice guy to boot. Penetration by Gill, who sets up Earl McClellan momentarily, but Gill winds up with it on the left side. Gill trying to get possession. is called for the offensive foul. Pretty good acting job. Trust me, that's a great acting job by Kareem yeah, Reed. He's trying fine. to get it. There's pressure. He's up in his face. All he does is step around with an elbow. Reed hits the floor and draws the charge. Mike Wood says the Emmy goes to Kareem Reed. First personal on Tim Gill. 16-12 Arkansas with the ball. Lyndon Alexander left alone, can't hit the three, but Hood pulls down another rebound. Hood, the board king early on, the chairman of the board. Tariq Wallace now into the line for Arkansas with the basketball. So we see Tariq for the first time, number 23, a JUCO transfer. Nolan may play as many as 12 guys tonight, he told me. Alexander turns and shoots. He's missed his first two, but Hood gets another rebound. Tariq Wallace guns home the three. Tariq, a 6'2 Juco transfer from Shorter Junior College in Little Rock, cans the three, and Arkansas has a 19-12 advantage at 11.57 to go in the first half. You're watching ORU Basketball on TV 53. Please bring your program to the sports table. ORU has six. That was a nice performance there by Derek Taylor going up and over the competition. But right now, Timmy Gill and company, they're, they're playing good defense. They're forcing the shot that they want. But when it's missed by Arkansas, Big Derek Hood is there to get the board and lots of second, third opportunities and throw in a Tariq Wallace three. And you've got a 19-12 advantage for the Hogs. While Hood was in the ballgame, he collected five rebounds. He's out now, and they've brought Wilson back into the ballgame. That's kind of a nice opportunity to have when you can bring Wilson in for Hood. <laughs> Arkansas comes out man-to-man -man out of the timeout. Earl looking for some help as he loses the dribble. Goes to Kevin Scruggs. Back to Gill, who spots up for the three. Yes. 
second three for Timmy Gill, giving six for the game. 19-15, a four-point lead for the Razorbacks. Wilson, high post, tries to dribble in for penetration, dumps it off to Thompson, the floating one, Hender, and Ali gets the kind bounce. You're seeing a lot of bodies falling around the Arkansas basket on the offensive end. They're a very physical ball club. Ali Thompson off the bench for five. No drop-off at all for the Razorbacks, huh, George, when they bring a new guy in? A lot of speed, a lot of quickness around the basket. Rocky Walls puts up the J in and out, and Thompson rips down the rebound. Kareem Reed brings him back the other way. Arkansas trying to pick up the tempo, but even when they're playing the half court, they're getting a lot of rebounds, and now a steal for the ORU Golden Eagles. Earl trying to run the break. Tim Gill left alone. Can't get that one to drop. Couple of tip-in tries don't work, and Kareem goes behind the back. What a dribble. In for the attempt at the layup, and it's knocked down by James Cruz, and Kareem is going to walk through the line with two free-throw opportunities. Nolan calls him the best point guard in the SEC, and nobody here at the Navy Center is going to argue that. Well, a lot of quickness, and the thing is, he's predominantly a left-handed player, but he can go right or left, and that's a good foul by Cruz Absolutely. there. He's coming in. He's just swiping the ball down clean. They've let them play a little bit of basketball. And I think if Oral Roberts will realize that, that we're going to get to bang a lot tonight, that may intensify it up a little bit more. But so far, I understand they're trailing by six, but look at it from this standpoint. They're playing the 16th ranked team in the nation. It's right. pressuring you all over the floor. They've handled it pretty well so far. They can hang this close. They'll kick this ball game and win it. Reed hits his third free throw of the game. He has three points. Make it four. And it's a 23-15 advantage. Biggest lead of the game for the Razorbacks at 8 at the 10-38 mark. As Bradley is back in the lineup for Arkansas, the press produces another turnover. Tariq Wallace will have it. He goes to the lane and runs over Cruiser. And James Cruz playing some outstanding defense, takes charge. You can really tell a senior. You know, everybody's going every which way but loose, and Cruz steps up and takes the charge. Well, it's a great point. Whenever you're playing against somebody that's extremely quick, which Arkansas is, what you try to do is cut off their passing lanes, figure out where they're going, and draw a charge. Great job by Cruz. Ball is doubled up in the backcourt, needs some help, and now goes to the dribble. And Lee Wilson going to get a call for sticking his knee out. So Wallace says, thanks for that. The fourth team foul on the Arkansas Razorbacks. ORU, by the way, has five. ORU trailed by 14 at the intermission last year in the game that they ended up losing by one. They're just trying to keep it close is what Coach Self hopes. They can uh, make it in for the upset at the, the end of the game. Nice, nice, nice split dribble by Earl McClellan as he's able to beat the press. He goes left side. Crenshaw will spot up for the three switch. Seven points for Crenshaw to lead the way in scoring for ORU to get him back to within five, trailing 23-18. Pat Bradley is yet to hit a bucket. The man who went 25 in Arkansas's opener. Oh, and Ollie Thompson penetrates the lane, dumps it off to Pat Bradley, and that's what I get for Jinx and ORU. Bradley's first bucket of the game. And suddenly it is a 25-18 lead now for Arkansas. Scruggs is free on the baseline. He hits the rim this time, but it goes out of bounds. ORU will control, and Derek Taylor comes back into the lineup. 9.42 to go here in the first half. 25-18 Arkansas with a seven-point advantage as Scruggs will sit down, and Bill Self not happy with Scruggs, and he's talking to him there on the bench. McClellan, high post, one dribble, inside, Crenshaw, count! Three-point play, great move by Crenshaw, but an even better move by Earl McClellan to realize what was going on, great dribble to free himself up, an even better pass to Clifford Crenshaw, use a little strength to go up inside of both Wilson and Ali Thompson. Well, it's a great move by Crenshaw, but all of a sudden you're seeing Earl McClellan get a little bit comfortable with his dribble, not feeling the pressure that he was early in the ball game, and he's handling the ball so well off the press now. What's created that is his quickness, ball handling, and all of a sudden you get a guy slashing to the basket and you score. I'm counting up the ninth man to play for Arkansas is now on the floor. Stevie Green comes in for the first time as Crenshaw cannot convert the three-point play. Williams loses it in the backcourt. Just one of those things, bad dribbling, and ORU says thank you very much. They'll take the turnover. Now Tim Bill got a quick rest during the free throw, quickly gets up and goes and comes back onto the lineup. Some good minutes delivered by James Cruz. 
25-20 Arkansas. Gill's back in the lineup. He hit those two big threes. McClellan's hit it. And you can open this game up in a hurry. You start hitting some threes. And now we're going to get a pressure call again. It's against Green for putting pressure on McClellan. What's happened is Earl's really turning the body well, and they get the caught for the reach and the taps, because what they like to do is tap the ball away from the guards and then use their speed to go get it. I'm looking at Nolan Richardson, who has stared now at Mike Woods for about two minutes. Didn't say a word, just gave him the Nolan stare, and sometimes that stare is more meaningful than a lot of words from some coaches. McClellan will penetrate, and this time shuffles his feet, and quickly the traveling violation is called, and Arkansas will have it going back the other way. And Brad Dunn smiling on the Arkansas bench. I think he thinks the stare may have helped out Arkansas's cause on that particular trip down. Tariq Wallace has it out front, goes to Pat Bradley. Pat Bradley left alone. He'll try the three and in and out. No good. Nice rebound by Rocky Wallace. Not a shot that Nolan would like to see taken. Wallace high post, left alone. He decides to try a jump shot. No good, but the rebound pulled down by Taylor. He has it blocked away. He's still battling for the loose ball. Tariq Wallace comes up and goes back the other way. And now Hood along the baseline. Can't get it to drop. Still battles for the rebound. ORU comes up with it. Derek Taylor, 2 on one look out, dunk. You know. If you call that a dunk, George, it's kind of a, I don't know, but anyway, ORU will take it. We'll take the two points right now at this time in the ball game. Five points for Derek, 25-22, Arkansas wants up by eight, now leads by three. Tariq Wallace takes the three, and yes. It's pretty good for a scrub, huh? Comes well, you come bench. in off the bench, you hit two threes for the ball club to keep putting pressure on Oral Roberts University, but a nice job of defense, too. Eight minutes and counting as the crowd chants, O-R-U. 28-22 here in the first half, Arkansas by six. Arkansas back to his zone. This trip down. Turn around. Jump shot by Derek Taylor. And he's sizzling right now. Seven points for the former McLean Scott. And he's got the crowd very much into it as Derek Hood looks for some help out front. Landis Williams. To Stevie Green, who puts up the jump shot. Give him a three ball. The freshman from Monticello drains it. He had 13 points in his Razorback debut on Friday night against Jackson State. And he's one of those guys, and now Clifford Crenshaw's having some difficulty. He's one of those guys, George, that maybe not everyone recruited, but Nolan's glad he did it. Tim Gill takes it coast to coast, and will earn a trip to the free throw line as a personal foul is whistled on the Razorbacks. Well, that's where he used his quickness against Bradley. Bradley's set up to take the charge, but he doesn't really realize how quick Tim Gill is, and he's able to fade away from the basketball. Watch Gill explode into the hole here. Bradley tries to step in front and take the charge. It doesn't happen. He's able to fade away off that left leg and shoot it and draw the foul. Eric Perry now into the lineup. is going to let Earl McClellan take a rest for the first time as Eric's seen his first playing time of the evening. Been a very entertaining basketball game here in the first half as Timmy Kill will knock down the free throw. This is a big test for Eric Perry. He's going to have to come in and fill in for Earl McClellan. He can't go the full 40 every ball game, and it's a big test. He's going to get some pressure put on him as a freshman to see what they can do. But Oral Roberts has pulled it back within five. It's 31-26 from the Baby Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's Golden Eagle basketball on TV 53. This is team to within five at 31-26. Arkansas, a five-point advantage at the 728 mark. And I gotta believe at this point, there's some little intricacies that Bill Self's not happy with, but He's got his team right there hanging in, and, and they're playing some pretty good ball against a very good basketball team. Well, they've been successful freeing up Timmy Gill and also freeing up McClellan for the threes, and that's going to be something that's very important. You're going to have to watch and see if they come back out the second half and do the same thing, and Eric Perry's going to have to step up his game right now. Arkansas will inbounds. Tariq Wallace with a couple of threes off the bench for the Razorbacks. He thinks about the three and decides to bounce pass it underneath, and now he'll take the three ball. His first miss from the outside, and Blake Moses back in, hauls down a rebound. Tim Gill getting some pressure in the backcourt. No place is safe on the court against the Razorback pressure. Crenshaw goes to Moses. Moses tries to go back door and flip it, and he does. The first back door of the year for Blake Moses. I watched him in so many scrimmages make that move. He finally pays off here in the ballgame against the Razorbacks. You're out if you're playing horse that time with Blake Moses. Nice move by him. And now on the other end, Derek Taylor trying to reach in and pick up the basketball. Instead, he picks up a personal foul trying to reach over his good friend Landis Williams. 
Landis was telling me that uh, he sold quite a few tickets. Well, he didn't sell them, but uh, he got quite a few tickets for some of his family and friends from here in Tulsa getting to see Landis play. Well, it's just a couple of hours down to the campus to watch him play in, in Arkansas, but still yet to come back and be at home and play. It's got to be a big night for him. Kareem Reed, the all-everything point guard, goes inside to Glendon Alexander. High post, that's Derek Hood with the basketball. Hood has been huge this evening off the boards. Nice job by Perry that time, denying a basketball out to Reed. Stevie Green puts up the shot. It goes in and out, and the rebound controlled by the Golden Eagles. They're down by three. Derek Taylor will penetrate. He feels it tonight, folks. That one will not go in, and Hood pulls down yet another board. Kareem Reed now sees Landis Williams spotting up underneath, and Timmy Gill with the block. Keith called it a block. Bill Self called it a block. Unfortunately for ORU, the officials call it a personal foul. Folks, that was all ball. Well, he's, what he's upset about more than anything is he thought that Derek Taylor was fouled on this end when he went up with the shot. They don't make a call. They come down. There's been a lot rougher blocks than what we've seen here when Timmy Gill went up and blocked Landis Williams' shot. That's what he's complaining. Let's make it fair. I don't care if it's Arkansas. I don't care if they're 16th rank in the nation. Let's just make it fair on both sides. Landis drains the first free throw, voted the most valuable and improved player on last year's team, the most improved player on the Razorbacks, the 6-7 forward from Tulsa. He hits them both, give him six points on the evening and give Arkansas a lead at 33-28. Double up in the backcourt is Derek Taylor, and this time Landis gets the foul. And, it, and I, your point about consistency is, is well taken. That time it looked like Landis just barely made contact with the ORU player, and he gets the foul. That's why he doesn't like it. So now Nolan's got the stare going. Well, what ends up happening is that you end up putting a lot of pressure on a ball club. So now when you try to apply that pressure, and that's the way Nolan coaches, he's going to pressure you the entire ball game. The inbounds pass to Derek Taylor as he tries to step through. It's an obvious slap. Uh, by Landis Williams, but that's still the type of basketball Nolan wants called. Is that going to happen when they start league play? ORU was into the bonus with that personal foul in Arkansas, and Taylor misses the front end of the one-and-one. One. Glenn Alexander tries to fire up a three ball in Canton. ORU has a chance going back the other way to draw closer as they trail 33-28. Nice move by Perry. Tries to find Timmy Gill. Timmy Gill. Looks for help, goes all the way over to Clifford Crenshaw, draws the double team. Perry left alone. He'll try the three, yeah. Eric Crestwood from Putnam City with his first points of the evening, and his team now within two, trailing 33-31. Nice to see that from Perry, as George called him a very key two tonight, and he delivers right there. And now Perry gets the steal. It goes to Timmy Gill. He's going to bring the house down. Don't you very much. ORU has the lead. I'll tell you something, Eric Perry has came into this ball game and ignited this ball club by hitting the three, handling the basketball, a steal that time from the best point guard in the nation and Kareem Reed, and then kicking it out to Gill for the dunk to tie this ball game with 5.17 to go at 33. Or you in Arkansas, tied up at 33, and I didn't finish my sentence because it got so loud. Or you has the lead in fans finally, and some of the Arkansas fans have been making some noise, but right there, the ORU crowd got up and said, yeah, way to go, 33-33, as Timmy Gill knocks home the dunk, and he has 10 points to lead the Golden Eagles in scoring, but Eric Perry delivering some very quality minutes off the bench for Coach Bill Self. Arkansas set to inbounds the other way. Derek Hood thinks about it, and then says, ah, better not. Looks for some help. Lee Wilson thinks about it also, and decides he better not. And now the steal, yeah, by ORU. And the Golden Eagles have the opportunity to get their first lead of the night. Taylor on the high post to Timmy Gill. Bounce pass to Blake Moses. Wills, Dills, tries to go up, but in he does. There's that move again. He's used it twice on Wilson because Wilson tries to stop, go up, and look for the block. Sure enough, he takes it, reverses it, puts the spin off the glass, and it's in. Mark it down at the 445 mark. ORU with its first lead at 35-33. And a foul whistled on the other end, and the crowd is into it. Bill Self is into it. As Earl McClellan draws his second personal foul, and that is for ORU, the eighth team foul. So the one and one now in evidence for both squads. As you pick it up on the replay, 
Just showing Kareem a little Reed bit. So quick. He may get him turned on to the corner and he might not be beat to the basket. So all he does is turn around, draw the foul, stop it, let him go to the line and try to shoot it. Uh, but it just Reed is just so quick. I mean, it's just tough to cover that guy as he hits the first, he'll have the bonus. Kareem now, five of six from the line. The 5'10 point guard from the Bronx. Second free throw is no good. The tip up and in is good. I believe that's Landis Williams, George. Landis Williams with the hand up, and we've watched it the entire ball game. They'll keep that ball alive with a lot of tips. And indeed, Landis gets credit for it, so it's a three-point trip down for Arkansas, leading 36-35. Timmy Gill for three, in and out, no good, and Hood gets the rebound. And now it's a two-on-one the other way. Alexander down low to Landis Williams, and Williams hits two straight baskets to give him 10 points for the Razorbacks, and the lead is now 38-35, Arkansas. Crenshaw goes to help his comrade Derek Taylor in the backcourt against the pressure. Crenshaw splits the double team. It goes to Earl McClellan. Arkansas on the man-to-man, -man and Earl will set the O. Moses has it now high post. Arkansas trying to extend ORU's offense. Gill will penetrate, puts up the layup. No good. Moses tries to tip it. It won't fall. Arkansas the other way. Kareem Reed goes to Hood and Hood. Tries to finish and can't. And now Timmy Gill has it. He's going to try to finish. Dipsy, do yeah! Oh, yeah! Opportunity in a three-point play. The tail of two finishes. Derek Hood can't. Tim can. And now ORU has a chance to tie it up as Tim goes to the line. Well, Hood goes up for the slam dunk, and it's unbelievable that ball came back out of the rim. It looked like he's going to slam it home, and all of a sudden, you look up, and Timmy Gill's got it. I think what surprised Arkansas a little bit is the quickness of Gill and McClellan. Whenever Gill gets the ball, he's a three-point shooter. The whole nation knows that. But his explosiveness to the basket, the fact that he can get it off the glass, and the, and the way he can get off the floor in a hurry, he surprised a little bit people from Arkansas. 12 points for Tim, make it 13 with a three-point play. And Timmy Gill has his team back out in front. What a game we have going on at the Maybe Center. ORU and Arkansas tied at 38. George and I with more ORU basketball on TV 53 in a moment. His back. Timmy Gill hurt his back on a crossover move. Well, practice makes perfect. That's nice. That, that, that ties the ball game up with the free throw at 38. Well, that's an outstanding move by Gill. We talked a little bit about the explosiveness. But what's been the turnaround for Oral Roberts has been the turnovers. All of a sudden, Arkansas has committed five straight turnovers. The pressure. Reed was on the bench. He's came back to get a couple of steals and go. And it's not Reed who's turning it over. His pass is good. It's that second pass as they try to force it inside that's going awry for Arkansas. And that's a credit to so are you, and now they come out in the zone. They worked this pretty well the other night. They came in with a smaller lineup, went against Northeast, and get them to cut it. And Reed can't hit the three, but a rebound to Hood. Reed gets the follow, can't go. And now Timmy Gill will control. Are you with a chance to take the lead? Moses on the high post. Score tied at 38 in the final three minutes of the first half. Tim Gill is wide open, and the reason he is, there's a big old nasty pick set by ORU, and a bit too nasty as a personal foul is whist uh, whistled on Blake Moses, his second personal. Well, one thing about it, that sets a little bit of tone of what might happen here. Blake steps up, you want to come running through me, you're going to have to go through me. And yeah. he sets a great pick on Reed as he knocks him completely off of his feet, flat on his back. And Reed may feel the effects of that for a few minutes after he gets up and walks the other end to shoot these free throws. Reed has hit 5 of 7 from the line. He hits the first, he'll have the bonus. Arkansas is a team now, 10 of 12 from the line as Pat Bradley rechecks into the lineup. Blake Moses is all kids in Arkansas. Grew up loving the Razorbacks. The Moses, the man from Stevens, Arkansas, went to Magnolia High School as Reed hits his second. Reed has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points, all from the charity stripe. 40 to 38, a two-point lead for the Razorbacks. And Arkansas has gone to a much quicker, smaller lineup to try to apply this pressure 
to the Golden Eagle. Hill breaks it, goes coast to coast, finger roll, can't get it to drop, but he does get Kareem Reed to drop and draw a personal foul, and Tim earns a trip to the free throw line, and Nolan thinks that should have been a charge, and now Nolan is starting to get his dander up. When Nolan takes his coat off, George, that's when we got troubles from Nolan. But right well, now, he's still got it on his Timmy, goes coast to coast, and Kareem's still moving. It's a great call by the official. Well, Reed slides in, and this is one of the toughest calls in basketball, or you make the charge, or you call the block, and obviously, that time, Reed slid up under him after he'd left the ground. Now, if he's still on the ground, he might have got the charge. First free throw is no good for the young man who actually grew up in Jacksonville, Arkansas. Timmy, of course, went to Victory Christian right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, across the street from ORU, but he drops through the second free throw for his 14th point of the night. 40 to 39, and yeah, Tim liked Arkansas when he grew up as well. Ali Thompson has it in the high post against the man-to-man -man this time down of ORU. A lot of motion out of the offense from Arkansas, rotating the three guards, trying to free up Bradley for the three. Shot clock underneath 15 seconds. Ali Thompson loses it going up. And the official, who was really, really blocked down, Antonio Petty, from this perspective, didn't have a very good view of that. And that's what Bill Self is not pleased with. He whistles the personal foul. The man who was right on top of the play, Mike Wood, called nothing. Nonetheless, Ali Thompson will earn a trip to the charity stripe and shoot a couple. As the personal foul whisper, whistled, I should say, on Rocky Wallace's first. on its feet and it's a nice size crowd not quite a sellout as I know Ali Thompson goes for the second opportunity and he drains it 42 39 as Guy Whitney now makes his first appearance the 10th player of the evening for Nolan Richardson already here in the first half 6'5 200 pound junior from Bentonville Arkansas Nolan says he's a great attitude great practice player and he's earned an opportunity to play some quality minutes and he's getting them here this evening ORU has led on a couple of occasions. Right now they trail by three. Tim Gill with 2.15 and counting to go in the first half. High post Earl, down low Moses, tries to put the dunk in and can't. Are you kidding me? Derek Hood goes back the other way. That's where you make a poor decision to go up for the dunk. Moses should have just laid it off the glass, taken. He's trying to ignite this crowd, though, being from Arkansas, he's fired up. James Cruz, though, says no harm as he goes back the other way with possession for ORU. No harm on the missed dunk. Crenshaw doubled up, gets it to Cruiser, maintains possession, left side Gill. Gill out front, Earl. Cruiser will penetrate, dumps off Moses. He doesn't miss this dunk. Great to see ORU go back to Blake, show him they still got confidence in the big guy. 42-41, a lead of one for Arkansas. Possession of the basketball belongs to the Razorbacks. Both teams really, really wear, wearing on themselves, and Nolan notices that his team looked kind of tired. Kareem was kind of bent over, so he calls a 20-second timeout, and Chad Wilkerson will come in to give some of ORU's guys some substitutionary time. And, and right now, you can just see both teams going back and forth, even the most disciplined and talented team, which is in great shape, is out of breath right now, and that's the kind of game it's been. Well, it's been a very up-tempo ball game, but Bill Self's going to bring Chad Wilkerson, a 6'6 sophomore out of Texas, into the ball game, a good three-point shooter, but more importantly, what he does when he makes this move. There's a minute 18 left. Not that much can happen. He can protect the basketball. He shoot the three. He's got some quickness. He can help it. He's trying to reduce his lineup down, too, to add a lot of speed to this deal. You're going to see a nice pass here from Cruiser over to Blake. Blake's back up off of it. This time he lays it into the nets, as he should have on the play previously. <laughs> well, that's he learned right. his lesson, He's a little George. fired up. That's right. Fired up, playing pretty good. But Will Roberts has gone to a much quicker, smaller lineup to match up a little bit better with Arkansas. Kareem Reed, final minute 10 of the first half. Arkansas with the ball and a one-point lead. ORU playing defense. And they call a shot clock violation as coming out of the timeout, Arkansas forgot to look up at the clock and didn't have as much time as they thought. Well, it's a great job of defense by Oral Roberts also. Eric Perry pressured in the backcourt. Final minute of the first half. ORU down by one. Looking to take the lead here at 50 seconds and counting in the first half. 
Wilkerson against the pressure of Kareem Reed. Left alone and doesn't put up the shot. Cruiser out front. This time, Wilkerson draws the foul, Kareem Reed. Reed, I believe, George, thought that Chad was going to put up a shot, and when he looked to make a pass, it, Kareem was just kind of caught in an awkward situation, and that will put Wilkerson on the line for a pair. As well, he we goes up right with here, the head fake. He comes, gets him off his feet. When he does, he gets the bear hug. Chad. Wilkerson is a great shooter. He had a wide-open 10-footer and didn't take it. I'm sure that disappoints, but a little bit. He's nervous also. He's playing in a very big ball game. He cans the first free throw. And I'm telling you, man, Kareem Reed is like one of the most athletic guys in college basketball, and Chad just faked him out of his shorts. Way Drew to Cole right Wilkerson. Off, drew him right off of the ground, goes up and hits both free throws here, which is outstanding. And puts the Golden Eagles back in the lead, 43-42, with 39 and a half seconds to go. You talk about stepping up to the occasion. Wilkerson cans a pair of free throws. Shot clock is at 30 seconds, game clock at 34, so there's about a three-second differential. They'll have to get the shot off before the end of the first half. Reed on the penetration, puts up the shot, can't get it to drop. Pat Bradley tried to follow, I should say Whitney tried to follow, doesn't get it to go. And they're calling a jump ball uh, situation and possession goes to Arkansas. The smallest guy on the floor, Clem Reed's in the middle of all the Giants trying to get the rebound, but again, a great job of defense by Eric Perry. He comes in off the wing, doesn't get the tip. Nice try by Whitney on the tip. Tariq Wallace out front, goes to Kareem Reed, and now the quarterback for Arkansas says 15 seconds to go, we'll play for the final shot. ORU, a one point lead. Remember a year ago, they were down 14 at the half. Or are you looking for one more quality stop? Reed caught in a no-man situation, goes to Whitney, puts up the shot, no. And ORU will go to the intermission, and now Rocky Walls has some words with a couple of the Razorbacks. And a couple of the Razorbacks think about talking to Rocky Walls. ORU has Palmer Head for the Leaves it, 43, 42, back with the halftime report in a moment. And it's as magnificent as it has been in a long time here as you see plays like this are the reason why. Earl McClellan back door on the perfect alley feed from Clifford Grinshaw, 53-50. And right now, ORU is carrying out Bill Self's game plan to perfection, George. Well, they're taking the pressure and applying it to them. It's not just a situation where they're laying back waiting. They're applying the pressure. Earl McClellan at the point. Arkansas comes out, and they're putting some pressure out front, but the back guys are trying to play somewhat of a laid-back zone. But Moses is wide open on the great beat for Walls, and Walls is playing out of his mind right now. Walls with four points and a couple of assists. Blake Moses now with eight points. Biggest lead at 55-50, and he misses the jam on the other end. As Arkansas will control, and Lee Wilson is being dominated right now by Blake Moses. Hood, post, turn around, and shoot and score. It's nothing nice can move do. By Hood. Nothing can do. Great move by Hood down on the baseline. A nice little fadeaway and hits it. Arkansas keeps on waiting for this bubble to burst for ORU, and the bubble just keeps getting bigger for the Golden Eagles. Crenshaw will spot up for the three. It won't go, and the rebound is controlled by Kareem Reed. Arkansas with the ball, down by three. Bradley left alone for the three. Yeah. Well, that's death when that guy gets it and has that much wide open space. He has 12 points. He ties the ball game up at 55. Moses in the high post gets hit by Kareem Reed, who thought he had all ball. And the high post play of Blake Moses really right now has Arkansas a fuddle. They really don't have an answer for it as back into the lineup comes Tariq Wallace for the Razorbacks. And I think that, that's just a situation where all of a sudden Kareem Reed's reading the defense. And what I mean by that is whenever they bring the high post up, he's leaving his man sneaking over, trying to get a steal and an easy basket at the other end. Instead, he draws his third foul in the ball game. They can't lose him if they're going to win this game. He's the quarterback in the corner. Now, Timmy Gill has it. Arkansas trying to trap. Gill along the wing, goes down low to Moses, off the glass and in. He listened to you, George, he listened to you that time, and it's a three-point play opportunity for big old Blake, who now has 10 as he walks to the line count. Well, you gotta remember, a lot of this is, is the result 
of Timmy Gill hitting some threes and the defense going out to draw him and then the power play of Blake Moses. We said he got to establish the inside game to get the outside game. Well, they had the outside game. Now all of a sudden you're getting that big man starting to go to the hole and making those baskets. Lyndon Alexander whistled for the personal foul. And I don't know if Hood and or Wilson are tired or what, but Moses is beating them to the punch. He completes the three-point opportunity and Big Country 2 gives his team a three-point lead. Rebound the other end for ORU. Here comes Timmy Gill. Shakes, bakes, hands off the walls, and is called for a walking violation before he passes the ball. Timmy doesn't like it, and quickly Derek Taylor gets off, off the bench, and Walls will take a seat alongside Bill Self. 13.55 to go in the ball game. ORU 58, 16th ranked in America, Arkansas, 55. The Razorbacks with more victories than any other program in America in the decade of the 90s. Moses leaning in on Derek Hood. Kareem Reed has not hit a shot yet, so he passes off. Glendon Alexander hasn't hit a shot either. Gill will pull it down. Clifford Crenshaw penetrates, bounce pass, Derek Taylor almost. Still battling. Pat Bradley has it for the Razorbacks. Three on two the other way. Alexander stops and it's knocked away on a nice defensive play by Tim Gill. McClellan comes up with a loose ball. The other way to Crenshaw, yeah. That's what you call great basketball, great defense, or you hustle back, bust it up the, the express coming at him and turns it over and McClellan takes the ball and goes scores. Nolan's not when ORU up 60-55, he wants a 20-second timeout to get the attention of his Razorbacks. You know what's been great? Or Roberts has been able to get back every time that Arkansas tries to get a break and get it moved. I can't think of maybe but two breaks the entire night where, all, where Arkansas has had a clean break. One of those has been a brick on a dunk. The other one, they laid it in for a two-point play. But Oral Roberts has been able to take the ball, go to the hole, and do it very well. And uh, you got to be excited if you're Bill Self and a Golden Eagle right now. But still yet, he's got to keep them focused, keep them fired up. There's still 13 minutes to go in this ball game, and you got to keep Bradley closed up. He's starting to shoot it a little bit better, and if he starts hitting the threes, you're really going to have to close him down. Biggest lead of the night enjoyed by the Golden Eagles at 60-55, to 55, as you hear the crowd just getting so involved here at the Mavie Center. The Razorbacks never thought they'd be in this position again after ORU almost beat the Hogs in Fayetteville one year ago. Tariq Wallace out front against the man-to-man -man defensive pressure applied by Crenshaw. Shot clock at five. Tariq's got to put a follow-away up. Won't go. And the rebound to big old Blake. And right now, Moses is the best big man on the floor. Crenshaw, senior leadership extraordinarily great tonight. McClellan down to Moses and it's slipped away by Glendon Alexander who saves it on a nice defensive play for the freshman. Reed will have it the other way. Penetrates, spins and shoots and scores. His first bucket of the evening. That was an outstanding play by Kareem. As soon as he made the bucket, he had to go say something to Earl McClellan because McClellan really has dogged him all night long. He's played much better than he has in the ball game, and Earl realizes that. They're not matched up right now. It'll be interesting to watch it the rest of the ball game. 12 minutes and counting. ORU with the ball and a three-point lead. And now it's a bad pass by Earl. Lyndon Alexander will stop and pop. It won't drop, but his follow does. First bucket of the evening for Alexander, and suddenly the five-point lead has been cut to one. And I think Earl may be getting tired as he looks over to Bill Self, and Bill immediately turns and gets Eric Perry ready. McClellan penetrates the lane, puts up the shot, and that was a tired-looking shot. Hood will pull down the rebound and serve as his own outlet. Arkansas with a chance to retake the lead. Bradley, the follow-away jump shot, count it, and he draws the foul. Whenever you're a pure shooter, Keith, when you get the opportunity, you get that thing rolling, and all of a sudden, they start falling. That's when the tide will turn, and Arkansas is taking a one-point lead, 61-60. This is a very off-balance shot. He takes it and falls away. I mean, and this is what I mean when the tide turns and the shots start falling. And all of a sudden, Oral Roberts is going to have to make some changes. Struggs is in for Blake Moses. He's tired. Earl McClellan's tired at the point. Eric Perry came in and produced in the first half. Well, this is where you get into the situation where Nolan has already played 10 guys, and his guys at this point may be just a tad bit fresher as Bradley completes the three-point play to give him 15 for the night. 
It's 62-60, Arkansas on top of ORU at the 11.25 mark. What a game at the Maybe Center. Back with more in a moment. And welcome back to the Maybe Center. Blake Moses trying to part the lane in the season lead. ORU to an upset. Has 15 points with the baby hook working for him. Unfortunately for ORU, Arkansas worked on a 10-0 run that got a five-point deficit up to what is now a seven-point lead. Well, I think one other factor we need to, to figure into here, Keith, Timmy Gill gets 14 points in the first half, and in the second half, he's only shot the ball four times and scored two points. They've got to get him back into the offense. And those two were free throws. Reed will bring it up. Seven and a half minutes to play here at the Maybe Center. Arkansas trying to extend a seven-point lead. Or are you applying to man-to-man -man pressure? Steve Green will spot up, but there's a whistle underneath. And the reason there's a whistle underneath is Kareem Reed is hurt. Took a shot to the head somehow when he was trying to penetrate. And I didn't see the play, so I, I can't describe further than that than what is obvious. Kareem Reed is in some pain. Well, he came along that back baseline, and when he did, he got hit, I think, either with an errant elbow or, or trying to make a cut off of a pick down below, and it hit him on the side of the head. And it really didn't probably feel it or see it coming. And Nolan is getting some words in as the trainer, Dave England, attends to Kareem Reed. Well, Nolan, of all people, I, I tell you, when Nolan coached here at the University of Tulsa and again at Arkansas, he will give an official an earful. And it seems like he'll wear him, and he knows when to shut it off when he feels like they're getting ready to shoot the technical. Using or this, give him a technical. Using this opportunity while Kareem Reed is now off the floor, and Nolan is not. And now some of the uh, officials and some of the fans are telling the officials to get Nolan and his coaches off the floor as Pat Bradley comes in to replace Kareem Reed, who is out as his ear appears to be what is really hurting him. He's grabbing onto his ear. Arkansas will inbound. He goes to Derek Hood, and Derek Hood lays it up and in off the glass. Derek has nine, and the lead is nine for Arkansas. Biggest lead of the game, and it comes at the 7.05 mark for the Razorbacks. Now, ORU needs to make something happen so this thing does not get away from the Golden Eagles. Crenshaw on the left wing. Look for some help from Moses. Gill will spot up for the three. Yeah. Big shot as George Mitchell, his first bucket of the second half. He has 19 points in the game. 73-67. Arkansas by six. Glendon Alexander barely draws iron. And that's not the shot Nolan wanted by the freshman. McClellan goes in the paint to Derek Taylor, who wheels and deals and shuts up an air ball. But luckily for ORU, it goes off Derek Hood, and ORU will control. And we talked about uh, Kareem Reed. He's back on the floor, Stevie Green going out. Well, one thing that Derek Taylor's got to learn a little bit here, too, is your quickness is good. But remember, once you draw the defense in three, somebody's got to be open, kick it back out. That's what Bill Self talks about whenever he says establishing. Inbound to Taylor. Yeah. Derek Taylor inside in the trees, hanging in for nine points, and it was up to nine points. The lead was for Arkansas a few minutes ago. Now the lead has been cut to four. Hood and Kareem play catch, and Kareem throws up a three, and it doesn't go. And suddenly, ORU, which had lost momentum, is slowly but surely picking it back up at the 550 mark in the ball game. Crenshaw looking inside, looking for some help. High post free is Blake. Earl McClellan will penetrate and throws it away almost, but Timmy Gill picks it up. Back to Earl for three. Swish. Maybe the biggest shot of the night for ORU. And that's not Earl McClellan's job to hit threes, but he can hit it when he gets the spot up and do it. And Nolan Richardson wants a 20 because he's not happy when his ball club goes on a 10-0 run and all of a sudden they're only up by one because of the hot shooting of Timmy Gill, the rebounding of Derek Taylor, and Earl 
McClellan comes back and hits the three. How do you answer a 10 0 run? You go on a 9 0 run yourself. To cut the lead that was at 1.9 down to only one. And how big is Earl McClellan? He only shoots when it's so important. This is a quality shot, kids, at 5.40 to go in the ball game, and he drains a three. Well, the nice part about it is he's a senior. It's the confidence level. Two years ago, he probably would have taken that shot, Keith. Now, all of a sudden, he gets open at the top of the key. It's a wide open three, and he's saying, well, I got to take it. Whether I hit it or don't hit it, I got to take the shot. Two years ago, he wouldn't have done that. He does it tonight. Hits the big three, pulls it within one, and all of a sudden, he's brought that Oral Roberts crowd back into the ball game, and that's very important. For those of you who don't know the story, Earl walked on here because he believed in the ministry program and now Bill Self says he's one of the better point guards in America. Arkansas will not argue that point here this evening. 520 and counting Arkansas with the ball on a one point lead. What another classic between these two and there is whistle and contact underneath away from the ball. Tim Gill waves his hand so yeah the foul was on me. Third personal on Tim and that will send Pat Bradley who was trying to work Tim off on a pick I believe to the line for a one and one opportunity as that is now the eighth foul on ORU. Timmy Gill has 19 points to pace ORU. Pat Bradley with 15 paces the Hogs, make it 16. Bradley, who tied a career high with 25 on Friday night in the Razorbacks opener. He also had 25 as a freshman at LSU. And he hits them both. Man, is he smooth. 17 for Pat Bradley, 75-72. Arkansas's lead to three. The penetration by Crenshaw. ORU was able to pretty much do what it wanted to against the press, and really they haven't used it since then, but Hood comes up with the steal. Quickly the other way, Glenn Alexander is taken down hard. That's not an intentional foul as much as Arkansas is asking for the intentional foul. All that is is a double block with both hands. He had happened to leave the ground, and you got to understand, Derek Taylor is one of the well, strongest men on the club. He goes up to block the shot. I mean, no question he got the, the body and the arm, but he also got the ball. So no question what Derek wanted to do, just prevent the easy bucket by the freshman. But and again, you asked you earlier how the freshman would respond to a little pressure with 10,000 yelling at him. We're going to find out right here. A classic score, according to Nolan Richardson. I respond very well, Keith, says Glendon. Well, he's a big, strong kid from top to bottom. You'll see a lot of young kids come out of high school with a strong upper body. He's a big man, and he's going to be very good at Arkansas before it's all over. Had knee surgery only a couple of weeks ago, and is already back and drains them both. Some pressure free throws give him eight. And now Arkansas, it's just been kind of going like a roller coaster. Right now, Zingo is up to a five-point Arkansas lead at 77-72. At the five-minute mark to go in the ball game. Arkansas has been able to answer and control Blake Moses. ORU's gone back to its wing play, and now they're trying to come up with another opportunity for Tim Gill. Tim Gill has it flipped away, but Moses is there for the loose ball and gets the drop. And two big bodies fall on the floor and no call. Moses gets knocked down to the floor by Landis Williams, and there's no call on that end of the play, and Bill Self wants to have the call. Got to have some balls bounce your way, and that one did for Blake Moses and ORU. 77-74. Arkansas and Alexander tries to draw the personal foul. They're going to call the foul, though, on the floor. So that will send Alexander back to the line, and it turns out to be no different if it was called a shooting foul or not because it's the 10th personal, so it's two free throws upcoming now for Glendon Alexander. Massive substitution as both coaches try to get some of their key players a rest so they can maybe sit out a few seconds to get ready for the stretch run. As you see, Glendon underneath and Crenshaw got him with the chest. There won't be a call as far as the ball going in the hole in the bucket count because he did happen with a push on the backside as he got beat as he turned the corner. That one goes in and out for Alexander. His first miss from the free throw line. Can you imagine, George, 35 points a game? I don't care if you're playing in the rec league. It's an awful lot of points. I wonder what the rest of the teammates did. They average 45 or. <laughs> <laughs> and he misses them both. That's a little bit of that freshman pressure we were talking Finally about. Finally looked like a freshman, didn't he? All right, huge possession here. 420 to go. A three-point deficit for ORU. Trying to pull the upset against the 16th-ranked team in America. Alexander goes for the steal. That leaves Cruiser open for the three. Senior can't convert quite. Put up a good shot, got a good look, but it just didn't fall. Kareem Reed now trying to direct traffic. 
Williams baseline to Pat Bradley who leads Arkansas in scoring in this ball game and in the season. Landis Williams had 10 early. Haven't heard much from him. Reed will penetrate the lane. Gets two guys in the air. Gets it blocked away. And Walt pulls down the rebound on some outstanding defense. Earl gets it knocked away momentarily. Still battling for it. And what's going to happen here? Arkansas is going to come up with it. And it's going to be a break the other way. Unless Cruz can get the foul. And he can't. But the follow is put up by Glendon Alexander. He says thanks. It's quickly 10 points for Alexander. And the lead back up to five for Arkansas. Glendon Alexander doing well and trailing that play to put up the rebound. Big possession here. ORU could use a bucket. Moses in the high post. Looks for Timmy Gill. Tim tries to penetrate and loses the ball, but Bradley, I believe, is going to be called on the reach in. Both Bradley and Alexander were there. And you can see, George, everybody kind of reaching down and grabbing the shorts. Lots and lots of exhaustion on the floor right now as Gill will step through the line. He's grabbing the shorts, too. The foul going to be whistled on Alexander, his second personal. As you see, reach in by everybody right there. The legs are kind of starting to go for both sides, and that's why the reach in occurred. Well, uh, Timmy's trying to take advantage of his quickness against Bradley. Bradley's not known for his defense. He's known for the shooting, and Timmy gets him on a, beats him on the first dribble, and he reaches in and gets the foul. Eighth personal foul in Arkansas. So it's a one and one, and he will get the bonus. That puts Gill at the 20-point mark. He has a chance to get 21 and a chance to cut the Razorback lead down to three. ORU led by one at the break. Got the lead up to five, and he misses the second. Arkansas saves. Arkansas has led by as many as nine here in the second half. Razorbacks with the ball and a four-point advantage. And ORU trying to crank up a little pressure and come up with a defensive stop against the Razorbacks. Arkansas in no hurry. So trying to get some opening shots out front for the guards. Now they go high post on the turnaround to Hood. I don't think that's a shot Nolan wanted as Wall pulls down the rebound. He's got guys draped all over him, but he will save and control. Two and a half minutes to play. Oh, are you with the basketball? Gill left alone for three. Yeah! A big three-point shot, and you've got to understand, shooting a three from the corner is the hardest shot in basketball versus shooting out on the perimeter. Everybody on their feet. 2.15 to go. Arkansas, the ball on a one-point lead. What a finish from the maybe center as Williams will take the shot. It doesn't go in, but Hood pulls down on it. Big time rebound for Arkansas. Cruz putting pressure on Alexander as they try to force the turnover. Bradley will spot up for three, in and out. Rebound, Blake Moses. All right, folks, under two minutes, ORU can take the lead. 79-78 Arkansas. McClellan out front to Timmy Gill. Cruz, the senior, with Glendon Alexander, the freshman on him. Well, you've got the matchup you want with Timmy Gill and Bradley. You ought to be able to take advantage of him. Gill will penetrate. He takes some body contact. That's a great move and a great play. I just they can't believe it. I don't call it on foul. the shot going up in the air. They call the foul on the floor. And let me say this, if you disagree with that call, they called it as soon as it occurred. There was no question. It was on the floor. So Tim will go to the line. That's the 19th foul in Arkansas. Fourth foul on the Razorbacks, Pat Bradley. Yep, it's on the floor. It's a fine call. And he's pushing some free throws. If this is the NBA, that's a three-point play opportunity. Absolutely. But, <laughs> but he's pushed from behind before he ever leaves or releases. 94 seconds left. A one and one. ORU down by one. Come on, Timmy. Yeah. We are tied at 79. And for the Arkansas folks who thought January 27th was some sort of fluke, guess again, baby. Tied up at 134. ORU has the lead with 134 to go. Tim Gill has 25 points, and ORU has a shot at the upset. 80 to 79. Back with the finish in a moment. Back to the babysitter, ORU shooting 7 of 14 from three-point range, and never a bigger three than that one at the 2.30 mark, which got ORU back to within one. Timmy Gilden hits two free throws, hitting both ends of a one-and-one, and, one, and this crowd is rocking as they are hoping they are about to see a monumental event in the history of ORU basketball. ORU on top of 16th-ranked Arkansas. 
They got to go and turn it up a notch here. And, and really, when the ball goes into the air, if I know Nolan Richardson, he wants to try to get a good shot off. Don't worry about well, making a three. Let's get a good shot. When that shot occurs, ORU's going to have to go hard to the boards. They got Rocky Walls, they got Crenshaw, and they got Blake Moses in the ball game along with Gill and McClellan right now, but they're going to have to go after it in a hurry and, and block out. Nolan has taken most of his rebounders out and gone to the wings, hoping to get a three-point shot if he needs it, but Hood is the guy who takes the shot and he swishes it. Man, that's a great shot. It's been really fun, George, to see both coaches coaching so well out of timeouts. 81-80, Hood gives them the lead at the 115 mark. Earl McClellan will dribble out front to Timmy Gill. ORU with the ball, down by one. Gill will penetrate, puts up the finger Oh, yeah, as Ollie Thompson knocked it back out as it, as it had gone all the way through at 59 and 3 tenths second. Give ORU the 82-81 lead. Give Timmy Gill 27 points. And give Bill Self a big assist on that as he drew up a perfect play. They had absolutely perfect play. And if they thought Timmy Gill worried about him getting a chance to play at the next level, you've seen some quickness of driving the ball to the hole and shooting the three. 50 seconds and counting. Arkansas down by one. The 16th ranked team in college basketball. Hood, who hit the last shot at the 115 mark, has control. Tariq Wallace in the baseline. Looks to go to the big man, Wilson. Wilson backs his way into the bucket. Jump hook. On the tip, but they're still battling for it. Crenshaw will control, and a foul whistled on Arkansas. What a great job that time by Crenshaw to go up and keep battling. But I tell you, Keith, what kept that alive was Blake Moses tipping the ball, tipping the ball, tipping the ball, and finally McClellan's able to come in and make the play and grab it. When they do, they get the bear hug. And that is the tenth team foul on Arkansas. So Cliff will get two free throws. Crenshaw in his 71st start of his great career. We'll remember this one for a long time to come if he can drain a couple of free throws right here. And people need to remember this ball game's not over. 28 seconds left in the ball game. Or are you up by one? It'd be sweet to get both of these. Come on, Clifford. Yeah. There's one. Or are you led by one at halftime? And a timeout is taken on the floor by Arkansas. Or are you led by one at halftime? They lead by two right now. 83-81. Back with the final 28 and 7 tenths in a moment. Welcome back to the magnificent to it why not 28 and 7 10 seconds left or are you a two-point lead over number 16 Arkansas with Clifford Crenshaw at the line looking to add to it well one thing that Bill Self has done also is he's only sent one in cruisers in on the rebound right now along with McClellan everybody else's backs in case he misses his shot there won't be a fast break or are you with 12 straight wins wouldn't 13 be lucky and he misses the free throw so the timeout works just like Nolan Richardson wanted it to or you up by two Arkansas with the ball final 20 seconds read on the penetration can't get this one to drop as he did a year ago now Gill left alone to try to go coast to coast yeah throws it off on a great shot a great steal and moves the ball up the floor or you by four Arkansas has got to hurry Lyndon Alexander a wild shot no good rebound and or you has an opportunity but McClellan throws it away do they call a foul in the backcourt yes they do as Earl and the fans are celebrating. Five and seven, ten seconds left. The reason Earl threw it away is because he was hit in the backcourt. ORU 85, Arkansas 81, as ORU looks for its biggest victory ever here at the Mavy Center. And if Earl can hit one of these, that should ice it. Pandemonium at the Mavy Center. Doesn't hit that one, and now Bill Self wants a timeout to set up his final strategy for if he makes it or if he misses it. Or he by four with five and seven tenths left. Well, the reason he wants this timeout, he sees all the celebration going, and he realizes there's almost six seconds left in this ball game. He misses a quick fire, hits a three, you're up two, steal an inbounds, and you can do that in 5.7 seconds. He wants to get that ball club focused on the sides, and fellas, it ain't over. Now, you got to get back out on that floor, stop to celebrate when the buzzer hits. We can all dance and hug. Until then, not. 
not not until then are we going to do that. And now, if he hits this one, now you can celebrate a little bit. You think that George is just uh, trying to create a little bit more drama here. I personally, one week ago, witnessed Oklahoma State down by six with six seconds to go winning it in regulation. Absolutely, and they came back and win the ball game. So, I mean, you know, looking at this realistically, you've got to feel that way. I mean, you've got to think, what a great shot here. Gill takes the steal, takes the pass from McClellan, and it's up the floor. But if you look at all the battles, Steve, you got to, Keith, you got to be excited with the fact that McClellan's been able to handle the pressure. He's dished it. He's rebounded it. you got to credit the entire ball club tonight and the coaching staff. How ironic that it is Kareem Reed who puts up the dipsy do with, what, eight, nine seconds left, which could have given uh, Arkansas a tie situation. The same man who put up the dipsy do to beat ORU one year ago, but this time he doesn't go the Arkansas point guard's way. Earl McClellan with a free throw, and if he makes one, he makes one, that should just about do it. I look out and among the crowd tonight, Charlie O'Brien of the Toronto Blue Jays taking this one in. Says catch Charlie and catch Earl. As Earl gets his eighth point. Number five, Daniel Daniel G comes in. You might wonder why G comes into the ball game. He is a great defensive player, product of Scott Paddock. Two seconds to go. One second. There it is. It's a final. The biggest victory in ORU history. 86-81. Fans are storming the court as the 16th ranked team in college basketball has fallen victim to the longest win streak in college basketball. Lucky 13 in a row for ORU has upset the Arkansas Razorbacks. If you thought last year was a fluke, you're wrong because this year ORU wins 86-81. Just check out the scene and enjoy it, ORU fans. You are witnessing Bill Self's biggest win. Well, this is a great win for this program, and everybody knew coming into this this season they had a very experienced ball club. They had a veteran ball club, and tonight I think you saw that on the floor, and they were able to handle the pressure even when they had a 10-0 run put on them, got down by eight or nine points. They fought back, fought back. Well, the Roberts wins at 86-81. We'll be back right after this. Lucky 13 is a victory over the 16th ranked team in college basketball, 86-81. Sometimes they say, kids, don't run out on the court. Don't do that. But when you see the president, Richard Roberts is probably okay when he's out there having fun, too. <laughs> I think he can go out on the floor and take the congratulatory that he gets. And, and, and they deserve it tonight. This ball club came out and never quit, Steve. I, I keep wanting to call you Steve. Keith, they never they came out. You want I'm a little excited here tonight. Yeah, this has been a great ball game, tonight. Keith. I tell you something. They came out. They never quit. They played hard all the way through. Even when they got down eight, nine points, they still fought back. And I think you've got to look at the whole ball club and what Eric Perry did when he filled in for Earl. Earl went down, came back, and showed a lot of true grit. And I said something to you. At the seven-minute mark, Timmy Gill had scored two points, two free throws. In the next seven minutes, he ends up with 29 points for the game. So, you know, he turns it around and scores 13 points in the final seven minutes of this ball game, and, and, and really won the ball game for Roberts along with the defense. And with the big guys really controlling things much of the first half, Rocky Walls comes out in the second half with just as dynamite. Nine rebounds, Blake Moses, dynamite. He winds up on the night with 17 points, and that allows Tim Grill to get some spot-ups, and that allows ORU to pick up its biggest victory ever. And we've been talking about the momentum of this program. My goodness, it's like a boulder going down at about 100 miles an hour downhill as Bill Sales got this place just rocking tonight. Well, you can't go away a disappointed fan of whoever you were, Oral Roberts or Arkansas tonight. But if you're an Oral Roberts fan, there's no excuse not to pack this gym and come watch a great ball club play. They just beat the 16th That's ranked right. team in the nation. Uh, you've got some great basketball to come out here and watch. No excuse, folks. You need to come out here and watch this because they do have a great team. Man, are we pumped, up for one? What a performance tonight. <laughs> ORU shocks Arkansas, 86-81. See you on Saturday. Stephen F. Austin is next. What a win for ORU.